and welcome everyone to a new series of uh, clinical pharmacology and drug therapy. Uh, I am Dr. Khalid Hassan, Associate Professor of Clinical Pharmacology. Today we are going to continue our uh, lecture about the uh, gastrointestinal pharmacology. Uh, we already covered the peptic ulcer disease, uh, uh, gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer, and then we, uh, we, we discussed the uh, GERD, uh, gastroesophageal uh, reflex, reflex arc, uh, then we went through the, uh, the, the nausea and vomiting, and the next uh, section today we are going to speak about uh, constipation, uh, natural treatment, and drug therapy. Okay, as you can see here, uh, the definition of constipation, uh, constipation may be defined as uh, a di difficult uh, or, or infrequent passage of, st of stall less than three times per week. Uh, stall could be hard, could be small, could be dry, uh, sometimes associated with the difficulty or pain on defecation. Uh, some people feel feel they they are not in complete evacuate their their colon and their rectum. Uh, I would like to share this screen with you. This website coming from Gut UK, and we have the topics here: constipation and the purpose of this one, in order to allow us to diagnose the di the constipation. If we scroll down with this page, and this is the Bristol uh, stool chart. So you can see we have for Bristol stool chart, we have from one to seven. Uh, this is a stool for uh, maybe shape. And does that uh, give us any information? The, if we need to understand what is type one, type two, type three mean for us. And they said in the beginning, this chart called Bristol stool chart is a way to identify constipation. Constipation is generally referred to the boo that, uh, that is type one or type two. So if the patient with the type one or type two, in this case, we define the patient suffer from constipation. So type one, for example, here you can see type one uh, separate hard lumps uh, like nuts, and this is the this is constipation, hard to bust. Uh, Sometimes you can see like sausage, sausage like sausage shape, uh, but lumpy, and this is type two, and the other considered not constipation. So f the, for this reason here, the Bristol sh uh, stool chart uh, I think is very important to have it in your clinic or to have it with your patient or the, maybe the people who is listening to us to know what type of constipation they, they are suffer from. So type one, type two, if not, the people consider like normal people and we have several type of uh, stool uh, shape uh, on chart. Okay, moving to the next slide here. Uh, now we ask ourselves, what is the causes of constipation? As, you, as is appearing on the slide, the most common causes of uh, constipation, and this cause is considered like modifiable. That means if you adjust this causes, we can maybe r remove, we can treat the constipation without need for treatment, for example. So sometimes the uh, people don't take uh, enough fiber in their uh, enough fiber in their food, so th their diet low in fiber. Uh, if you don't drink enough uh, l l water and liquid in your food. Uh, and especially when you, you know about that, 60% of our stool is like uh, consists of water. So 60% of our stool will be uh, water there. So it's very important to keep hydrated. Uh, decrease physical activity. When you practice physical activity, this will stimulate the peristalsis of the intestine and the colon. Okay, you can see here for the adequate fluid intake, someone may ask how much I, uh, water uh, or maybe fluid I should take every day. So you can see here coming from the some channels here recommended for women, for example, should have two liter, like eight cups of fluid every day. And for men about 2.6 liter, it's around 10 cups per day. This for the fluid, enough fluid uh, per day. Okay, also on this slide here, the purpose of this slide, they said exercise is essential for regular bowel movement. So we need the exercise. We need to go and walk, run, and do some exercise at home or outside home uh, in the backyard, for example. Do some exercise to enhance and uh, maybe uh, activate your uh, regular bowel movement. Okay, another cause is for constipation, and this one we call this one like induced constipation. 
So we call, we call this one uh, a constipation induced by drugs, for example. Some medication, some drugs may cause constipation. This is very important. Here we, we need to type it here, very important causes. And we need to, uh, very important causes. We need to maybe exclude these causes when you have patient uh, uh, come to the clinic suffer from constipation. We have to ask about um, medical history or drug history. So medical history and drug history is very important to, to discover or to find out if the patients that take any medication may cause constipation. And pregnancy also is very important uh, cause for uh, constipation. Okay, here the list for medication uh, may cause uh, 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 constipation. Okay, list of medication may cause uh, induce constipation, opioid. Okay, so what we have here, we have opioid like uh, codeine, for example, like dextromethorphan, morphine, and bentazosine. Then we have NSAID, such as ibuprofen, diclofenac, naproxen. We have calcium. When you, have, when you take a lot of calcium in your food or food rich in calcium, calcium may cause constipation. Some antacids, such as aluminum hydroxide and calcium carbonate, may cause constipation. Antipsychotic medication, Antipsychotic medication because antipsychotic work on the D2 receptor, dopamine receptor, antipsychotic medication, and most of these medication also of the antipsychotic block the uh, histamine, uh, histamine 2 and histamine 1 receptor, and cause uh, uh, mainly histamine 1, histamine 1 receptor, and cause the uh, effect of. Uh, what not not only the D2, the H1, and we are speaking about most carinic receptor. So black dopamine, uh, blocking histamine, and black mo most carinic receptor. All these could be like a factor for the constipation. Di diuretic, diuretic because the di di diuretic, such as furosemide, Lasix, spironolactone, increase uh, excretion of uh, fluid, and we need the fluid for the stool to be softener. Uh, or soft, so for this reason we need the, the, the fluid and diuretic en enhance excretion of fluid, make our body lose the fluid and water. Okay, moving to the next one here, uh, the next uh, maybe drugs may involve in constipation. We have CCB, stand for calcium channel blockers, uh, such as amlodipine, nafatipine, deltaism, uh, clonidine. Clonidine is alpha, alpha 2 uh, adrenergic, uh, agonist and this medication used for patients who suffer from hypertension for this reason clonidine may cause constipation and uh, if the patient take medication for uh, overactive bladder overactive bladder such as oxybutynin and oxybutynin consider like M muscarinic uh, muscarinic receptor could be M1 or M3 receptor antagonist so for this reason oxybutynin uh, causes relaxation of smooth muscles and make the smooth muscles lazy and decrease belastalysis okay and now we talk about uh, the disease may cause constipations for example we have irritable bowel syndrome uh, we have tumor for example when you have tumors so think when your patient come to the clinic uh, for example uh, above uh, 50 years of age for example and suddenly start suffering from constipation everything was normal then suddenly the patient starts suffering from constipation think about that tumors number two for example if the patient suffer from uh, losing weight for example uh, if the patient start losing weight and suffer from constipation start thinking about a tumor if the patient start, for example, seeing blood in the stools, so we have several issues here. If you have blood in the stool, losing weight, constipation, start thinking about the tumor as a differential diagnosis, and we go, we, we need to go the colonoscopy to def, de, do, to confirm or exclude the cancer here. Okay, moving to the next uh, um, causes related to the disease, uh, diabetes, diabetes and mellitus, especially when you have neuropathy, and we know that diabetes mellitus associated with a uh, gastroparesis, it's kind of paralysis of the GI system. H hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism mean uh, decrease, hypothyroidism mean decrease activity of thyroid gland. 
okay a hypocalcemia decreased calcium level in the blood uh, so we have some other central nervous central nervous system uh, causes for for example if you have a, a head trauma spinal cord injury or like a, a cerebral a cerebrospinal accident Parkinson's disease sometimes cause uh, constipation so we have less of disease may cause constipation uh, as you can see we already discussed uh, maybe uh, some uh, uh, lifestyle uh, some uh, maybe the disease some medication may cause uh, the constipation we need to figure out what is the main cause of uh, constipation for every patient we need to take medical history drug history family history to confirm or to exclude the, uh, the diagnosis okay this slide here um, collect all the causes or possible cause for uh, the, the constipation could be we already covered that could be the uh, decre uh, decrease uh, fiber in our diet and educate fluid uh, intake decrease physical activity irritable bowel syndrome tumors diabetes mellitus hypercalcemia head trauma uh, drug induced uh, constipation we have less of medication there pregnancy now how to treat uh, patients who are from constipation so we have uh, maybe a group of medication we have too many group of medication but first we uh, need to go to the look on the natural treatment what what is that do you have any natural treatment for the constipation here so most people don't need uh, most people don't need laxative so we sometimes we we don't need to prescribe medication to our patient for example we recommend patient to take high fiber diet uh, educate fluid intake regular exercise and response to your feeling if you need to go to the bathroom go to the bathroom don't postpone so don't maybe make it like last in your priority make it first on your priority so number one here when you have intermittent constipation best prevented by uh, uh, enough uh, fiber diet in your diet take enough uh, fluid practice exercise don't sit on the chair in the, in your, at your office for a long time uh, make some exercise walk for 10 minutes then come back every two hours so every two hours go for walk and then come back uh, go for walk for 10 minutes for example if you feel you need to that to go to the bathroom go to the bathroom okay so you can see here is this one here consider like uh, natural treatment no need for that uh, no need for the medication here so we can practice uh, enough diet enough di di fiber in our diet drink a lot of fluid practice exercise response to your nature uh, need okay now what type of treatment you you already you already you already practice or you already maybe follow the instruction uh, for the natural things okay you follow all these but you still rem is complaining from constipation what you are going to do okay what you are gonna do okay in the next coming slide we are going to speak about medication used to treat constipation so we are going to speak about the laxative okay we are going to speak about laxative or another we have another name cathartics so we have two type of uh, maybe terminology we are going to use it to treat constipation normally we use laxative medication belong to the laxative we have some medication belong to the cathartic so laxative could be cathartic could be laxative but cathartic will be only cathartic okay okay we have list of medication belong to the laxative and used to treat uh, constipation uh, we have uh, several group here as you can see on the on the screen we have bulk uh, we have the bulk here bulk forming laxative we have softeners or lab lubricant then we have uh, osmotic laxative a stimulant laxative which with the stimulant we have another name cathartics so stimulant laxative or cathartics the same terminology the same name okay chloride channels activators opioid uh, receptor antagonist then we have serotonin 4 receptor agonist okay so our repeated bulk forming softener osmotic cathartic or stimulant chloride channel activator opioid receptor antagonist serotonin 4 receptor agonist this is a list of medication that might be used in patients from constipation now we now we try to uh, maybe bring some medication belong to each group here 
So you can see here we have bulk forming laxative. Uh, we have psyllium, methylcellulose, polycarbophyll. So three medications, psyllium, methylcellulose, polycarbophyll. Softener or replicant, we have dacusate, enema or oral. We have glycerin, we have mineral oil. Glycerin available like subbasatory. So for softener, dacusate, glycerin, subbasatory, mineral oil. For osmotic, magnesium hydroxide, milk of magnesia. We have sorbitol, we have lactulose, polyethylene glycol. So this is a list, the first list for the constipation. Bulk, softener, osmotic. Okay, moving to the next uh, list here. We sometimes we can use cathartic or some some med maybe medication able to stimulate the colon. We have aloe, sana, cascara, besacodeb. So this belongs to the laxative stimulant, laxative or cathartic. Sa aloe, cascara, sana, besacodeb. Uh, what about the next group? We have chloride channel activator, lobibroston, lena lenaglutide. Next, opioid receptor antagonist, methyl, methyl naltroxone, alfibroman, and naloxigol. Serotonin receptor for uh, agonist, we have tigasort and brocalbride. Okay, now we have this is the list we use it for the patients suffer from constipation. We can select one of these medications bulk, softener, osmotic, stimulant, chloride channel activator. Opioid receptor antagonist. Please remember we have uh, antagonist for the opioid. Okay, antagonist for the opioid. But if you talk about serotonin 4, we use agonist. So we need to remember that agonist, antagonist, opioid antagonist, serotonin agonist. Okay, with a small uh, explanation for each uh, group of medication, only to give you a small maybe um, uh, information about each group for bulk forming laxative, we have uh, two medications, psyllium and uh, meta metamucil, uh, metamucil, psyllium metamucil or methacellulose, uh, citrocell. Um, this is a, a substance because like uh, indigestible and absorbed water forming bulky gel and promote peristalsis. So we need to understand how this medication work, unable to digest, absorb water, uh, form bulky gel, and enhance peristalsis of the colon and uh, GI system. So increase in peristalsis, the movement of the colon. Okay, so we, we need to maybe remember this, this medication here, uh, Cetrocell and uh, Metamucil. Uh, psyllium and methacellulose, this belong to the bulk forming laxative, absorb water forming bulky gel and enhance peristalsis. Okay, what about stool softener or lubricant? For stool softener or lubricant, as you can see here, we have dacusate, we have dacusate, okay, dacusate, go back, we have dacusate, a glycer glycerin suppository mineral oil. So you can see the mineral oil here. We have the we have the uh, uh, glycerin subbasatory. Then we have uh, this one, the bisacodyl. Uh, but I'm going to bring another image for that. Then we have dacusate. So dacusate available like capsule, oral, or subbasatory for bisacodyl dacusate. So which one here we we need to look at? So this one is wrong. Okay, we need to replace it now. I'm going to replace it. But we have uh, for st stool softener, we have dacusate, glycerin, suppository, and mineral oil. Okay, speaking about uh, 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 glycerin suppository, you can have it here now. You can, we, we have, uh, we are already corrected. We have glycerin suppository, we have uh, dacusate, colase, then we have mineral oil. Uh, this group of medication that you say glycerin mineral oil considered like a uh, stool softener. This allowed uh, water and lipid to penetrate the feces and facilitate the passage of feces in, uh, through the colon. So this group of medication softened the stool's material, permitting water and lipid to penetrate into the feces and facilitate the fe movement of feces. Mineral oil, clear viscous uh, oil, uh, that lubricant fec fecal material, retarding water absorption from the stool. So we have the mineral oil. So three group of medication because of the like lubricant, stool softener. We have dacusate, sub glycerin suppository. Then we have mineral oil. 
Okay, the third group. The third group will be osmotic laxative. Osmotic laxative, we have list of medication there. As you can see, we have uh, six of these medication on the on the pictures: magnesium oxida, ox, uh, oxide, magnesium oxide, sorbitol, lactulose, lactulose, magnesium citrate, sodium phosphate, polyethylene glycol. So for osmotic, six product available: magnesium oxide. Okay, then we have magnesium citrate. We have uh, lactulose, we have sorbitol, then we have polyethylene glycol, sodium phosphate. Six products available under the name of osmotic laxative. I will repeat it. Magnesium oxide, magnesium oxide, magnesium citrate, sorbitol, lactulose, sodium bisphosphonate, polyethylene glycol. Okay. Osmotic laxative, how this medication work? This group of medication are non-absorbable compounds. Uh, increase uh, stool liquidity due to the obligate increase fecal fluid osmotic try to absorb so if you have this uh, colon here and we have the osmotic the osmotic um, the particles osmotic particles here and we have the colons this is a colon wall okay absorb water from the colon Okay, absorb water from the colon. Okay. Now the, the colon will be fill in water. So when the colon fill in water here, the, this will uh, stimulate, this will sti stimulate peristalsis. So bring the water from the colon walls, from the colon cells and to the lumen and enhance peristalsis and cause watery uh, stool. So what we have here, uh, increase uh, fe fecal fluid. And you can see here, bring the water uh, to the lumen. Okay, uh, we have two types here, try to maybe out tell us we have salt, such a, for example, magnesium, magnesium, magnesium hydroxide, milk of magnesia. We have some sugar, sorbitol, lactulose, then we have polyethylene glycol. This is a very popular medication, uh, Merilax, uh, polyethylene glycol. We call this one Merilax. And the purpose of this medication, Merilax, uh, uh, considered like lavage solution, uh, commonly used to uh, complete uh, uh, colonic cleansing before the gastrointestinal endoscopy procedure. So the question now, which of these medication used to prepare the colon for the endoscopy will be polyethylene glycol? Polyethylene glycol belongs to which of a group of laxative, osmotic laxative? Sorbitol, lactulose, magnesium, all these belong to the osmotic laxative. Okay, for osmotic laxative, uh, some maybe uh, explanation for that. We have the, they're already covered there. Moving to the... Uh, the stimulant laxative, we have another name, cathartics. Uh, we have three main medication belong to the cathartic. We have aloe, if you remember, we have sana. We have bisacodyl castor oil. Uh, talking about uh, the bisacodyl, bisacodyl, we have it like a tablet, coated tablet, and uh, not absorbed in the GI system. This will arrive to the colon, and in the colon, it will be dissolved and stimulate the mucosa stimulate the intestinal mucosa in the colon and uh, and what else stimulate parasympathetic nerve ending and that means stimulate of acetylcholine and here we are talking about muscarinic receptor stimulate acetylcholine muscarinic receptor lead to the increase uh, increased peristalsis and increased secretion and this will enhance uh, uh, maybe uh, soften, uh, soften of the stool. Uh, so, bisacodyl consider like a stimulant. Dacusate consider like softener. So, bisacodyl coated tablet. We are going to see picture for the bisacodyl. Okay, bisacodyl here. And uh, you can see here what we have stimulant. Number one stimulant laxative. Bisacodyl. You can see the. the, uh, the, the the dull colax. Okay, bisacodyl. Sana bisacodyl castor oil belong to the stimulant laxative. Uh, this medication stimulate, stimulate. You can see the stimulate here. We need to remember this one. Stimulate the and increase bowel movement. Stimulate 
uh, parasympathetic system stimulate intestinal mucosa okay castor oil castor oil may cause abortion or increase uh, uterine contraction for this reason we need to avoid using castor oil during pregnancy especially during the first trimester of pregnancy Vaculax. okay moving to the next group of medication we have a chloride channel activator uh, this medication approved for the treatment of uh, constipation in patients with the ir irritable bowel syndrome so if the patient suffer from irritable bowel syndrome plus constipation so we can use uh, a chloride channel activator we have two medication we have lobipristone linaclotide okay so uh, irritable bowel syndrome plus constipation two medication we have here lobipristone and linaclotide um, so you can see uh, uh, IBS with the chronic constipation, IBS with the chronic constipation. Uh, we have emetiza and we have lenses. Okay. The, I will go to the images here. You can see the lenses, linaclotide, and emetiza for the uh, lobipristone. What is there any issue with this medication? We have two limitations. Number one, high cost. Number two, lack of information about long-term safety and efficacy. We still don't have enough information about these two medications, lobibristone, linaclotide. Okay. How this medication works? These two medications, lobibristone, linaclotide, activate the chloride channel in the colon and enhance or like relieve the, the constipation. Okay, in this slide here, uh, uh, we have a case called uh, uh, opioid-induced constipation. So if the patient you, uh, on opioid for the treatment of uh, cancer, for example, and he's uh, suffering from pain or she's suffering from pain related to the cancer uh, complications, so sometimes we prescribe opioid. Uh, we have less of opioid there, and opioid may cause constipation. So please remember that opioid-induced uh, uh, constipation and how we can manage how we can approach this patient so from uh, opioid induced constipation they tried to explain to us what happened here they said opioid okay okay as, uh, as mentioned here opioid uh, consider like uh, opioid consider uh, maybe a significant uh, const constipating effect opioid have significant constipating effect uh, acute and chronic therapy with opioid may cause constipation by several mechanisms this is the most important mechanism number one inhibit presynaptic cholinergic uh, nerves inhibit presynaptic cholinergic nerves number two increase tone of sphincter circular uh, smooth muscle we talk here about sphincter okay increase tone of sphincter and decrease uh, decreasing colonic movement so we have three mechanism number one inhibit the presynaptic cholinergic neurons and uh, number two increase uh, the tone of circular muscles we, here we are talking about sphincter an anal sphincter decrease colonic movement so three mechanism may be involved there and when you talk about cholinergic nerves we already covered that in some uh, some maybe a previous lecture we talked about um, the acetylcholine uh, acetylcholine function the main function for cholinergic or acetylcholine to increase uh, GIT, increase GIT movement. Or, or we call this one peristalsis or contraction. Okay, increase the uh, intestinal uh, sphincter tone and decrease colonic movement. Now, if the opioid cause constipation, sometimes they said, okay, what happened if we can use uh, like opioid antagonist, opioid receptor antagonist? So if you opioid, so if you go back there, so opioid induced constipation. So opioid cause con can we use antagonists to treat constipation? If the patient on opioid uh, induced constipation, we can use some selective antagonist of a mu receptor to uh, maybe antagonize the action. We have methyl naltrexone, we have albifumab, we have uh, Mofantic. Three medication available to treat patients from opioid induced constipation. Okay, you can see it here with the brand name for the, for the for example, methyl naltrexone available like tablet, uh, methyl naltrexone available in uh, vial or injection. Uh, then we have al uh, uh, alvimoban, then we have morphantic uh, naloxagel. Uh, 
for the methyl naltrexone, if you can see it here, we have it like tablets and we have it like injection. So available tablet and injection, and it's mainly used for, if you look what we have here, opioid induced constipation. Treatment of opioid induced constipation. Could be used in palliative um, care and advanced illness. For example, patients suffer from cancer and, and then they are in the advanced L disease. So uh, we use uh, this medication, injectable medication, to relieve the constipation. So we have three type of uh, uh, opioid receptor antagonist used for opioid induced constipation, methyl naltrexone, alfumabam, and mofantic. So here we will try to uh, maybe the, discuss a little bit of details about how this medication work. Uh, opioid receptor antagonist, opioid receptor antagonist here, antagonist. Uh, we have two medication there, and we can see it here at the list. We have three medication. Uh, this agent does not readily, readily cross blood brain barrier. This is the important uh, maybe features of this medication. Unable to cross blood blood brain barrier. That means there is no risk of there is no risk of addiction here. Okay, please remember that because this medication unable to cross blood brain barrier. This medication work peripherally and by uh, by inhibit uh, mu receptor in the peripheral tissue. So alfimabam, methyl naltrexone, um, mofantic inhibit uh, peripheral mu receptor uh, mu opioid receptor. Uh, without impacting the uh, the analgesic effect or the, the nerve central nervous system, there is no, no there there is no uh, analgesic effect. There is no risk of addiction. Okay, and this medication we already covered there uh, for the Alvimab capsule. Then we have methylnaltrexone, really stored uh, available like injection and tablet. Then we have Mofantic for chronic non-cancer pain suffer from opioids. So you can see OIC, OIC here for the both of the uh, maybe uh, opioid receptor antagonist. So if I am curious and click on the first one here, I would then uh, go to the what we have there and then bring you to the okay to discussion here. Okay, so what we have this is an information information leaflet or drug prescribing information. Uh, so the medication name here you can see it, Enterage, uh, uh, Alvimbam capsule uh, approved by FDA 2008. So this medication we read the information here about the medication. Maximize a little bit more. Indication. Uh, this medication is a peripherally acting mu opioid receptor antagonist. Indicated. Okay, indicated for the upper lower constitutional recovery following uh, partial large or small resection surgery uh, and primary uh, anastomosis. So for the, go there to the medication name. The first one, Alfibumam, Alfibumam, this one here. So you can see it is like this medication used for post-operative alias, paralysis of uh, GI system after the surgery. So this medication provide to uh, enhance movement of the peristalsis. Okay, uh, alfimoban, alfimoban. Alfi, alfi then we have moved to the nalitrexone uh, injection. Uh, we click on the next one here. Okay, uh, this one like uh, Mofantic, read the information about Mofantic, this is what we need exactly. So you can see here Mofantic, opioid, receptor antagonist, indicated for treatment of opioid induced constipation in adults. And with a chronic cancer pain. Okay, with a chronic non-cancer pain. So if the patient on opioid, we prescribe the Mofantic, opioid induced constipation. Okay, so we can read the information at your own time here for each medication, alfimoban, naltrexone, and Mofantic. 
Okay, now we have uh, active learning, uh, questions, brainstorm, questions. Okay, the first one, which of the following drugs has hyperosmotic mechanism? Next question, which of the following cathartic drugs stimulate bowel movement? Next, which of the following drugs are pulp forming laxative and form bulky gel? Number four, which of the following soften the stool agent that allow water and lipid to penetrate feces and the last one which of the following drug uh, drugs is used for ibs and chronic constipation chronic constipation okay so let us uh, maybe start uh, maybe answering this question here uh, with you so we're looking for the uh, uh, i will start with the abc to f and then we move to the question so methyl cellulose, methyl cellulose. So do you think methyl cellulose belongs to which one? Methyl cellulose. So if you select methyl cellulose for bulk forming laxative, you are correct. So methyl cellulose, you can type three here. Methyl cellulose, bulk forming laxative. Lactulose, lactulose. Lactulose belong to the hyperosmotic, hyperosmotic or osma, osmotic laxative. Number one. Okay, mineral oil. What do you think about mineral oil? Okay, so what do you think about mineral oil? Which one apply here for mineral oil? If you remember, mineral oil belong to the something called uh, softener, or we call it like lubricant that allowed uh, water and uh, lipid to penetrate in the, into the feces. So, do you think uh, allow water and to, uh, water and lipid to penetrate? This one number four. Okay, lobby bristone. Lobby bristone. This is considered like chloride, a channel activator and used for IBS plus constipation. What do you think the correct answer here? This will be number five. Okay, decusate. Decusate similar to the mineral oil similar to mineral oil uh, considered like softener uh, lubricant allow water and lipid to penetrate number four bisacodyl okay bisacodyl so we have three three one four five okay bisacodyl this one belong to the something called stimulant Okay, which one stimulant here? Stimulate, cathartic, another name. So the correct answer will be number two. So this is the best way to answer the, this question here. And we need, the, we need you to be familiar with this situation here. Okay, as you can see here, what we have for the, this medication here. Uh, methods, uh, so which of the following uh, drug has hyperosmotic mechanism? Hyperosmotic mechanism will be lactulose. Which the following following cathartic drugs stimulate bowel? So which one number two will be bisacodyl? Which of the following drug are bulk forming laxative and form a bulky gel? Number three will be methyl cellulose bulk. Okay, which of the following uh, uh, soften stool agent that allow wat water and lipid to penetrate feces? We have two answer here. We have mineral oil, we have dacusate. Which of the following drug is drugs is used for the IBS and with the constipation, chronic constipation? We have lobipristone. Okay, this website here present the uh, information about the uh, lobipristone amethysia, uh, lobipristone amethysia capsule approved by the FDA 2006. Uh, they said warning precaution and unique pregnancy. We have some maybe instruction there. But we can read the indication and uses. Emetiza 
or like uh, lobivristone, chloride channel activator indicated for treatment of edu chronic idiopathic constipation in adults, number one. So if the patient suffers from chronic uh, idiopathic constipation, this is a drug of choice. If the patient suffers from irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, but should be above 18 years of, uh, of age, and most of the study focus on the women. So for this reason here, so that uh, maybe in the main indication, a treatment, irritable bowel syndrome with constipation in women more than 18 years. What that mean? We don't have a study about men with the IBS with constipation. Okay, at the end of this lecture, uh, I hope you uh, learn uh, um, more information and uh, about the constipation, start from the definition, uh, pathophysiology, causes of constipation, uh, treatment available for constipation, depends on the cases when you have only chronic constipation, if you have uh, acute sudden, sudden constipation, or if we have uh, 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 irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, we have different group of uh, medication. Uh, you remember that from bulk to softener to stimulant, cathartic, then we have uh, chloride channels, opioid receptor antagonists. We have less of medication. We need you to remember the, the group name. Then we have medication belong to this group, how this medication work, and uh, what uh, is there any uh, side effect for example which of these medication is not uh, allowed to use during pregnancy you remember the castor oil is not allowed to use during pregnancy for example at the end of this lecture i would like to thank everyone for listening and attending this lecture thank you so much and have a great day